Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Xiong. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Today, I will further delve into the examination of individuals who could potentially succeed Xi Jinping. Let's now delve into the second potential successor, Li Ganjie, born in 1964 in Changsha, Hunan province. Li Ganjie graduated from Tsinghua University's Department of Engineering Physics, specializing in nuclear reactor engineering. After completing his graduate studies in 1989, Li Ganjie began his career as an assistant engineer at the National Nuclear Safety Administration. He also pursued further studies in France, gaining international experience. Progressive steadily within the National Nuclear Safety Administration, Li Ganjie assumed the role of director in 2006, concurrently serving as the Deputy Minister of Environmental Protection. However, upon reaching this position, Li Ganjie's career seemed to experience a decade-long plateau. It wasn't until Xi Jinping took office in 2016 that, recommended by Chen Shi, Li Ganjie associated with the Tsinghua received a promotion and was appointed as the Deputy Party Secretary of Hebei Province. In 2017, succeeding the elevated Chen Jining, he became the Minister of Environmental Protection and a Central Committee member. In 2020, he was transferred to Shandong province, taking on the roles of both governor and party secretary, solidifying his position as a prominent regional leader. At the 2022 20th National Congress, the 57-year-old Li Ganjie swiftly ascended to the political bureau, concurrently assuming the role of the head of the organization department, officially stepping into the heart of political power. The third potential successor is Ying Yong, born in 1969 and currently at the age of 55, making him the youngest among the Central Committee members of the 20th National Congress of the CCP and a rising star. Originally from Wuhan, Hubei province, Ying Yong graduated from Tsinghua University's Department of Automation in 1991. Thanks to his outstanding academic performance, he was recommended to the School of Economics and Management at Tsinghua University immediately after completing his undergraduate studies. Ying Yong chose to pursue a PhD directly, following the academic path of Zhou Xiaochuan, the former governor of the People's Bank of China. His doctoral research dissertation titled Securities Pricing and Investment Management Based on Time Factuals and Stable Distributions highlight his expertise in financial research. After completing his PhD in 1997, Ying Yong entered the state administration of foreign exchange and steadily climbed the organizational ladder. By 2002, he held the position of deputy director, and in 2007, he assumed the role of director at the Central Foreign Exchange Business Center. In 2001, Ying Yong was sent to Singapore, where he served as the general manager of China Investment Corporation, overseeing external investments. Following over a decade of dedicated service at a SAFE, Ying Yong, affiliated with Tsinghua, experienced a positive turn of events within the ascent of Xi Jinping. In August 2015, he was appointed as an assistant to Zhou Xiaochuan, the governor of the People's Bank of China. Further advancements came in 2016 when Ying Yong became the deputy governor of the People's Bank of China, marking him making him as the youngest deputy governor since 1949 at the age of 46. In January 2018, Ying Yong took on the role of deputy mayor of Beijing. By 2022, he further advanced to become the deputy secretary of the Beijing Municipal Committee. In the same year, he secured a position as a member of the Central Committee during the 20th National Congress, earning the distinction of being the youngest member in the Chinese Communist Party's Central Committee. Subsequently, he assumed the role of Beijing mayor, succeeding Chen Jining and officially attaining the ministerial level. The position of Beijing mayor holds unique significance, often serving as a launch pad for high-ranking officials cultivated by the leadership. Similar to Chen Jining, Ying Yong is likely to follow a comparable trajectory. 
it is foreseeable that he may experience further advancements in the coming years. Ying Yong, Chen Jining, and Li Ganjie epitomized the most notable figures from Tsinghua University within the current Xi Jinping administration. Occupying pivotal roles with substantive, uh, substantive authority and benefiting from a significant age advances, these three individuals emerge as the most promising faction within the current Xi Jinping administration. Among the four potential successors, Yuan Jiajun stands out as the only one not hailing from Tsinghua University. Born in 1962 in Tonghua, Jilin Province, he completed his studies at the Beijing University of Aeronautics and Astronautics, majoring in solid mechanics. For his postgraduate studies, he pursued spacecraft design at the Fifth Institute of the Ministry of Aerospace Industry. Yuan, equipped with aerospace expertise, also underwent brief studies in Germany in 1989. His professional journey commenced at the China Aerospace Corporation, focusing on rocket design. In 1995, he assumed the role of Deputy Commander of the Shenzhou Spacecraft System, riding on the coattails of his superior Ma Xinri, coattails of his superior Ma Xinrei, who was promoted by Xi Jinping. Yuan experienced a parallel ascent in ranks. In 2007, he became the Vice General Manager of the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation. Additionally, he was elected as an alternate member of the Central Committee during the 17th National Congress of the Chinese Communist Party, a significant stride towards the central leadership. Despite being an alternate member, it marked his entry into the central leadership echelon. Beginning in 2012, Yuan Jiajun made a strategic move to regional leadership. Starting in Ningxia, his breakthrough moment arrived in 2014 when he caught the attention of Xi Jinping, who promoted him to Zhejiang province, one of Xi's influential territories. In Zhejiang, Yuan served as a standing committee member and executive vice governor, working alongside Li Chang, who was the governor at that time and is now the premier. Joining the Central Committee in 2017, Yuan took on a prominent role as the party secretary of Zhejiang province in 2020. In 2022, at the age of 60, Yuan Jiajun not only entered the Central Political Bureau during the 20th National Congress, but also assumed the role of party secretary in Chongqing, succeeding Xi Jinping's trusted ally Chen Ming'er. Despite the historical challenges faced by political figures in Chongqing such as Bo Xilai and Sun Zhengchai, Yuan Jiajun's career trajectory suggests ongoing opportunities for advancement. After considering my analysis, you might be curious as to why Xi Jinping has favored these four individuals who, judging by their backgrounds, are relatively less seasoned in politics but have expertise in specific fields. Their promotions even surpass those of the previously favored Zhejiang Gan and Fujian Gan. This leads us to an exploration of Xi Jinping's governing strategy with imperial undertones. While Xi Jinping may be labeled as a finished project emperor with criticism in the realm of governance, his skill in wielding power is evident. In this aspect, he has unmistakably drawn inspiration from Mao Zedong. In essence, Xi Jinping simultaneously places great importance on and guards against the factions within his control. To prevent the dominance of a single faction, his approach to personnel has undergone noticeable changes between the early and the later stages of his leadership. Before the 19th National Congress of the Communist Party of China in 2017, Xi Jinping had not completely sidelined the Youth League faction and the Jiang Zemin faction. During this period, he leaned more towards his Zhejiang and Fujian gangs, comprised of seasoned political figures who could better implement his highly centralized approach and form a united front. However, after the 19th Congress, when he had firmly established his own system and gained complete control over high-level personnel decisions, Xi Jinping adopted a strategy reminiscent of Mao Zedong's approach to remove old figures and welcome new ones. A clear example is Wang Qishan, who despite playing a crucial role as Xi Jinping's enforcer during his tenure, was discarded without hesitation when Xi Jinping perceived Wang's growing influence as a potential threat.
The core of this imperial strategy is the absence of true friends. Everyone is essentially a servant with their utility determined solely by the emperor's needs. Xi Jinping started vigorously promoting officials from alternative channels after the 19th Congress, dispersing power and creating mutual constraints between them to prevent any one faction from dominating. This includes the Shanxi faction, CCP school faction, and especially the technocratic faction. The surprising speed of the technocrats' rise, such as Yuan Jiajun, Chen Jining, and Ying Yong, has caught many off guard. Meanwhile, some of Xi Jinping's old confidants like Chen Ming'er, who were once widely regarded, have been left in less crucial positions, dispelling any notion of them being potential successors, considering their age and current roles. Why has Xi Jinping, not typically viewed as an intellectual, shown a strong appreciation for technocrats with a cultural background in recent years? There are two significant reasons. Firstly, since assuming office, Xi Jinping has championed ambitious national projects such as the Lunar Exploration Program, Made in China 2025, Civil Military Integration, and the Semiconductor Leap Forward. Recognizing that his existing cadre of officials skilled primarily in political maneuvering lacked the expertise for technological innovation and development, Xi Jinping turned to knowledgeable professionals and technocrats. This shift became even more imperative after the deterioration of Sino-US relations in 2018, as China faced challenges in the realm of technological innovation and encountered sanctions from the United States and its Western and Asian allies. To navigate these complex issues, Xi Jinping had to rely on experts in specific fields to achieve challenging objectives. The second reason is that these professionals, originating from specialized fields and ivory towers, have a weak political foundation. The entrenched networks of the Zhejiang Gang, Fujian Gang, Shanghai Gang, and the Shanxi Gang, which have long been entrenched in politics, are intricate and complex. In contrast, these knowledgeable professionals lack their own political clout and can only rely on Xi Jinping who promoted them. This dynamic is reminiscent of the late stages of the Cultural Revolution when Mao Zedong vigorously promoted individuals like Mao Yuanxing, Zhang Chenqiao, and Wang Hongwen, new elites of the Cultural Revolution. Once separated from Mao Zedong, they had no independent influence and were unlikely to form any rebellious alliances, making them a reliable choice for leadership. Therefore, taking these factors into consideration, Xi Jinping, having solidified his authority, has notably shifted his approach to personnel, sidelining the old guard in favor of new talents. This strategic move has played a crucial role in rejuvenating the Xi faction and further securing his enduring leadership. However, it's essential to note that while these individuals are seen as potential successors, it doesn't guarantee a seamless succession. Why? Xi Jinping is already 70 years old, and by the time of the 21st National Congress of the CCP in 2027, he will be 74. For Xi Jinping, who has already broken numerous CCP power norms, breaking a few more doesn't pose a significant concern. Thus, even at, even at 74, if China undergoes no major transformations, he might entertain the possibility of serving another term until 2032. Regarding the four individuals mentioned earlier, only Ying Yong seems to have a slight chance of reaching the pinnacle. Furthermore, the topic of a designated successor remains highly sensitive in autocratic systems, as the heir holds a position above all others, making them the one figure everyone else looks up to. While others yearn for the unattainable supreme power, the heir apparent is both coveted and attainable, holding a position of legitimacy in the autocrat's succession plan. Setting aside historical examples, let's delve into the successors chosen within the Communist Party of China. 
After his establishment, both after its establishment, both Liu Shaoqi and Lin Biao were elevated and subsequently ousted by Mao Zedong, leading to their complete downfall. Similarly, Deng Xiaoping promoted Hu Yaobang and Zhao Ziyang only for their careers to be abruptly terminated. The CCP experienced a relatively smooth and orderly transition of power in the two decades following the Tiananmen Square. Uh, in Tiananmen Square incident with Jiang Zemin, Hu Jintao, and Xi Jinping. However, Xi Jinping's rise to power has disrupted this pattern, returning to a more traditional mode of succession. The main reason for our current discussion and speculation about Xi Jinping's potential success lies in his deliberate effort to keep this information confidential. This is evident in the selection of members for the Politburo Standing Committee during the 19th and the 20th Party Congress, where only senior leaders were appointed and the younger figures were notably absent. Xi Jinping has explicitly asserted his authority within the party, making it clear that he determines when he will step down, discouraging any thoughts of succession. Therefore, if Xi Jinping continues for another decade, these four individuals I mentioned may at most compete for the position of premier. Among them, Chen Jining has the highest probability and based on current trends, he may contend with Ding Xuexiang for the role of premier in the next term. However, if Xi Jinping chooses to become a lifelong leader, these individuals would have no prospects. Xi Jinping's current predicament parallels Mao Zedong's later years. While he has successfully ousted powerful adversaries within the party, he has simultaneously driven the country into disarray, facing the imminent threat of collapse. Ultimately, he may find himself compelled to turn to a figure with a fragile foundation and insufficient popular appeal, akin to Mao Zedong's recourse to the less influential Hua Guofeng to manage the aftermath. At that juncture, the certainty of Xi Jinping peacefully resting in his coffin becomes uncertain. I would go as far as to suggest that if China's economy continues its current decline, Xi Jinping and his successor might not witness a peaceful transition. The prevalent sentiment among the Chinese people is a fervent desire for him to face the consequences, perhaps reaching Karl Marx in the afterlife. The likelihood of Xi Jinping as the last emperor of the communist China looms large. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.